So you're thinking of timbering your property to improve the habitat for giant bucks. But what happens after you do that? How does that property hunt the next couple of years? What should you do to avoid making mistakes while hunting a just freshly logged property? I've had the privilege of hunting multiple properties where we've done harvest prior and being able to see the backside of that, of, of the stages in which a property progresses and the way that the deer use it. And I've learned quite a few things by doing that. And hopefully I can give you guys some information to just help you um, figure the deer out quicker and how to capitalize on that harvest. So let's dive right into it. Year one, this is the one that can vary the most, I think. Uh, it has a lot to do with when you do the harvest. Um, if you're doing it, you know, right before the deer season, it can impact it pretty negatively. Um, you know, if you're doing it, you know, say a week before, it's not ideal. Um, I would tell you to, you know, have a long-term approach because, you know, sometimes depending on what the mill, you know, there's nothing they can do about that. Um, but ideally, it would be logged out in the winter. Either way, though, you know, going into that first year, especially if you have prior history on this property, the hunting is going to be drastically different. Um, I, I went in to hunt this property and the several properties that I've hunted right after we log it and the deer just use the property very, very differently. And I found that, you know, I would have deer just out of range, couldn't get on them and it was hard to pinpoint what they were doing. Um, it didn't seem to, you know, negatively affect the amount of deer using the property. Uh, I didn't see a huge just immediate, you know, um, change, you know, especially if it's like in the spring, summer, when you do the harvest in the winter, you might see some effects of the regen starting. But, um, a lot of that was just, now you have tops in the ground, creating some side cover for the deer and they just use it properly differently and funnel through the properly differently. One of the things that I learned on this is it's tempting to want to just hunt along the logging roads. And while a lot of deer use those logging roads, um, I found at least the mature deer tend to use them more at night. Um, I found a lot of the daytime activity of the mature deer are running parallel with these roads or crossing the roads. Um, and I've, I've found, you know, I don't hunt on these roads as much as you would think you would. Not that you can't kill a deer, you know, on a logging road. It's not what I'm saying. Obviously there's exceptions to everything, but as a general rule, I've found the bucks tend to not uh, use them as, you know, as much of a travel, travel corridor as what I assumed they would. So we're into year two now, and this is where I found, you know, you start making some adjustments. So, okay, well, I was just out of range on a lot of these deer, so I make minor adjustments with my stand locations and go in thinking, okay, I got them figured out. Um, but there's still a lot of learning to do with this property. Um, year two is a little strange in that I found, it seems the deer almost are kind of getting accustomed to the property themselves. That first year, it's such a, you know, kind of throws them for a loop and they seemingly don't really know how to use a property. And in, in, into year two, they sort of settle into a new um, usage pattern and different from the year prior. So now you, you know, I've, um, at least on my end, had to make minor adjustments again. Uh, I did see a lot more deer. There was a lot just more overall activity. You know, he had some regen starting and I would say, you know, the property held more deer and I was seeing more deer in daylight, but it was still trying to figure out what they were doing. Um, you know, I would say when you go into this, try and look at a property just from a fresh set of eyes and not like, well, they have always done this, they're going to always do this. Um, you know, look at most recent sign and, and your most recent information on, on how they're using the property and then begin to adjust like that. Now, like I said, year two was a lot better. I had a lot of encounters. Um, I did miss a good deer um, in year two. And, you know, some of that was just, that was mainly on my end. That was my fault, not, you know, taking the time to arrange it correctly. But um, the property kind of begins to settle in um, into year two. Again, you know, like I said, had to make some minor adjustments, but overall the hunting is becoming better than 
you know, before logging and the year, the year after logging. Year three, in my opinion, is where stuff gets really exciting. Um, the deer seemingly have settled into a, a pattern on how they use the property and it's very similar to how they used it in year two and you're finally kind of those adjustments you made are spot on now and the deer become very predictable um it seems they they you know you can get on them easier there's more um, regeneration coming it's holding more deer um, the beauty about this stage is you finally have enough cover that it's beginning to come easier accessing in and out of your property and also you know, figuring out where the deer are bedding and stuff. Um, a lot of that was learned in year two, and now you can put that to use in year three. I saw a crazy amount of bucks using my property in year three, um, way more than, you know, any of the years prior. And a lot of mature deer too begin to use this property. And I was finally able to capitalize on one of those deer being this deer over my shoulder here. And you know, it took most of the season till I kind of got on them, but overall, I mean, I had um, four mature deer using, you know, a little 50 acre parcel um, regularly in daylight. It was just a matter of getting on them and figuring them out fully. So last year was year four for me and it only got better from there. I mean, it seemingly went from, you know, good, to even better. I I was amazed at the amount of bucks that began to use this property and then began calling the property their home, especially big mature deer, like very mature deer. Um, seemingly it becomes more of a core area for some of these bigger deer. Um, specifically the one deer I was after, he was I think six or seven years old and he, he very, very much called this property his home. I had one encounter with him early October and I blew my chance on that deer. Uh, it was, you know, just a bad shot and wasn't able to capitalize on that deer, but it, the property becomes so predictable at this point, you know what the deer are gonna do, how they use the property and you've dialed in your access. Everything is firing on all cylinders at this point. And what kind of blew my mind about year three and year four was other years, you, you sort of had, you know, these young deer, okay, a good solid two-year-old, couple and comer, and, you know, you see him, okay, now the next year's, year, you know, three-year-old, oh, he's really going to be a good deer, year, uh, year four, and then they would leave, and you just like, I don't know what happened to that deer, he just sort of vanished, and I had that happen a lot, whereas now, I was having new three- and four-year-olds show up regularly. I was picking up deer during the rut that were staying the rest of the year then and calling this property home because of the amount of does using it and the amount of security cover and, and browse that they were able to have. It, it was picking those deer up that other people were losing. And it just becomes a hub for daylight deer movement. So I'm excited for this year. Um, you know, obviously throughout this process, you're making, you know, other habitat improvements related to food and different things like that. But I'm excited for this year. And I think this is probably going to be the best year yet on this farm. Um, if you are enjoying this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you next time.